So I've done videos on this before, but let's ensure it's all in one place, shall we? How do we break into Savage Tia content? What prep is there to go into? Simple premise, and a lot of answers. This video is going to cover everything from unlocking a tier to getting groups. Let's get into things. If you like this video, please rate, comment, subscribe, and follow my other links down in the description. I stream very fun stuff sometimes on Twitch. First step before anything is unlocking Savage. The method is always the same, just some different NPCs. For example, we're in Endwalker and doing Pandemonium. The quest for starting both the normal and Savage modes are at Aporia and Labyrinthos. In Shadowbringers, it was the Crystarium and Mord Souk. In Stormblood, Relga's Reach. For Dawn Trail, I'm expecting Solution 9 to be our hub for the raid quests. On to the quests themselves, before you can do Savage, you are required to do the normal modes. You must complete the full story of the tier you wish to do. Raids are always split into three tiers, released in patches 0 .0, 0 .2, and 0 .4. The sub-patch can slightly differ. So Endwalker, we have Asphodelos, Abyssos, and Anabasios. To do the Savage mode of each of these tiers, you must complete the full normal mode story of each. It doesn't matter if you do all four fights if you do not turn in the final quest in that part of the quest line. Make sure you fully finish the tier. Then a new quest should pop up nearby, assuming the Savage tier has been released. Savage modes do have a short delay of two weeks before being added now. This could be different for Dawn Trail or any future tiers, but if you're getting into a tier day one, be ready to complete the normal mode quests and there be no Savage yet. Keep an eye on patch notes and trade info with players otherwise. The unlock for Savage is only ever a short cutscene. Typically lawyer excuses for why these fights exist. Otherwise, instant unlock. Good luck. From here though, there's a lot more to do to prep. A lot of meta info involved such as rotation and gearing. Places like Icy Veins or the Balance Discord tend to be quick and up to date. I have no affiliation with any of these places and do not take responsibility for anything they do. That's just how it works in this community. The main things you want to be on the lookout for are up to date openers, rotations, and gear. Practice your rotations on striking dummies as much as you can and perhaps even the current expansions Stone Sky Sea. It's basically an in-game DPS test to see if you are doing enough damage for the content you're trying. For gear, what you're looking for in outside resources is mostly the melding. At the bare minimum, you're going to get a full set of whatever the new crafted gear is. So Anabasios dropped along with I-640 crafted gear. A day one raider would gear up in a full set of this in high quality and penta meld it. Penta meaning five, or five melds in each piece of gear. You can fit five materia into any piece of gear that does not say advanced melding forbidden. Overmelds are any melds past the visible slots. Up to the first overmeld can be the strongest available materia. So with Endwalker, rank 10 materia. Overmelds beyond must be the next lower rank, so rank 9 for Endwalker. While rank 8 materia is technically stronger, it cannot be overmelded past the first slot, like rank 10. And we can assume Dawn Trail will work the same with ranks 11 and 12 for Materia. However, day one best in slot, the best combination of gear you can have in every gear slot, may not be exclusively this crafted gear. Normal mode has gear of the same eye level and doesn't need to be high quality. It is high quality by default. You would use some of this instead purely on the substats of the crafted gear. What if the chest piece has a lot of skill speed on it? You're playing something like, say, Dragoon, which has very often had builds with zero skill speed. You would either need to do a specific higher speed build, if any viable ones exist at that speed, or use a different piece of gear. So before you start picking up loot from the normal modes, be extra sure of what gear you'll be going in with. Get the right drops to collect the right gear. But this is all just focusing on day one. Also, when it comes to the cost of the gear, by the time the Savage tier releases, prices will plummet. Afterwards, they will fall even more and become very cheap. If you're lucky though, some statics will provide all crafted gear you need. I myself have been the one to provide gear to the group. Just at least be able to do gathering to help with that. Otherwise, uncapped tombstones will buy special materials. Provide those too. As the tier goes on, gets older, you'll also be collecting tombstones. One of those pieces might be part of your day one gear too. 
but you'll be working toward your final best in slot of all Savage and Tombstone gear, buying the pieces in that list. If you're getting in late, it's going to be okay if you're not getting full Pentamelded and going full Day 1 Biss. It might be technically slightly worse, but it could even be slightly better overall. But you're going in at least the crafted gear in item level. One other note though, Tombstone gear does not come at its maximum item level. You will need these upgrade items. These drop from the fights and can be bought with clear books. Clearing a fight every week will give you a book to buy gear, even if you're losing loot rolls so you're eventually guaranteed to gear up. But anyway, these upgrade items will bring, say, the 650 Tome gear to 660. If you get into a tier an entire patch late, these upgrade items will become available for hunt currency. The Alliance raids will also allow you to buy these, so you have multiple ways of upgrading Tome gear. You're still going to end up doing the fights in order, getting gear in order. That super specific min-max gear does give the group more leeway and all, but as long as you're at the item level of the crafted gear or above, it's fine. Just don't wear clearly bad pieces like skill speed on a job that hates skill speed. And if you do have crafted pieces, do pentameld it. With how hunting works these days, you can farm up tons of materia or buy it for very cheap. Hunters have been tanking prices for a while. The rest of your gear? Fill every available slot. While you're at sites for your best in slot lists, you have two more things to buy. Check the best in slot list for a food too. Food not only is a DPS increase, but gives a good HP boost. Especially while people are still gearing, every little bit of HP matters. If you're not sure what the current food is without best in slot lists, you can check whatever the highest item level stuff on the market is, then pick the one that has the relevant stats like crit and direct hit. We also have potions. Not the healing kind, but main stat potions. These are used in openers for a good increase in damage. In Endwalker, we worked our way up to grade 8 tinctures. However, Dawn Trail is likely to be starting a new potion type. What is it called? Who knows? But be ready to ask around or check the market board for whatever looks like it's new and being bought. Food, you always want this running. Again, bonus HP, that's big. You can also extend the timer of each food to 45 minutes per usage. This is done by using FC buffs or the personal ones from squads. You can also stack the timer up to two uses of food. So with the buff that increases to 45 minutes, that's 90 minutes of food without needing to use another one. Though it's often safer to use just one if you're doing Party Finder. Potions though? Do not use these while learning a fight. You can go through potions really fast with using one per pull, and when clears are using two, and sometimes even three per run, you're only popping these when you're getting close to clears. Or do, if you like burning a hole through your pocket. So we have the fights unlocked, we have gear and consumables, and hopefully you've gotten a grasp on your job. The kid gloves come off for Savage, but now it comes to actually doing the fights. We need to get people for doing the fights you have a number of choices. The most basic and easiest to achieve one is Party Finder. Open it up, create a party for the fight you want to do, or join one you see that is at your prog point. Prog being progression, how far into a fight you are, or the act of seeing further into one. Progging in Party Finder can need multiple different parties to hit a clear. People might not gel together, others may need to go get dinner or head to work. There's only so many hours in a day after all so expect some revolving door action at the least. One other issue with Party Finder is the code words that end up getting used. Sometimes it's simple to parse the details, other times not so much, but almost every single time, what it means is strategy names. To take an easy example, the first fight of Anabasios. The Levin Strike mechanic in the middle of the fight has a few different ways people have for positioning. In the Party Finder description, the strat this group will use will be listed. One such strategy is JP Strat, named as such because it was created and popularized by the Japanese players, opposed to something like Cryl Strat, which was created, at least I believe, by Team Cryl, a world race group. Sometimes strats are named after what you do in the strat itself rather than the people creating the strats. MRHT for the second fight of Anabasios means melees, ranged, healers, tanks. The order a specific mechanic is being resolved, and by who. 
There's no real way to know what these mean just by reading them. You'll need to ask people or go online and do a bit of your own research. Which early in a tier, that might just be asking a question in a different location. The older a tier gets, the more people tend to just assume everyone knows what everything means. But do be sure to ask and inform people. Just be sure you're not trying to skip ahead in fights. Pay attention to the name of the attacks being used. You reach Levin Strike, make sure you join Levin Strike or earlier parties until you can clear Levin Strike. While actively learning a tier, do your best to keep up with all the strategies people are using, even if you do not use them yourself. Party Finder is extremely fickle. They can decide to use a different strategy at random, even if it's a very, very bad one. You've been warned. The alternative is getting a static. The name itself often confuses people, but it's literal. A static is a static group of players who play together. You might have a static that's just under the 8 player requirements for raid, or even 10 people with some people cycling in and out depending on work days or such. But your group will stick together. Statics tend to have static hours too. Three days every week for three hours at this time. Every static is different, but there's ones for all different times, different amounts of time each week, and all that. Finding these groups is often easy, but finding one you fit with is hard. You might check Party Finder, or the recruitment subreddit, or one of the many discords. There are so many places you can check, there's no one central place. It's both good and bad. Good in that you have a lot of options, bad in that everyone is very spread out. I do not have any personal recommendations for what's good, what to avoid, or anything. Just they're out there. Good luck, and maybe leave a comment with a suggestion of where to go. Just be warned, YouTube does flag comments with links, so maybe just give the name. You can look for preformed groups, attempt to make your own, or just advertise yourself as a single person. Hey, I'm looking for a static, here are my credentials and time slots I'm looking for. Groups do typically ask for those, by the way. If you're newer, be honest. If you pretend to have experience and then mess up, it's you who will be embarrassed. Some groups will still give you a chance to prove yourself. Be honest with how much rating experience you have. There's a lot more that goes into statics once you do find one that has a time and schedule you like. Casual attitude, hardcore attitude, intense beyond clearing, and then there's trialing. Trialing isn't doing trials, it's trialing you to see if you're a fit for the group. You'll go play some stuff with the full group, or at least the full confirmed member list. They might test how you handle mechanics, general rotation stuff, or if your personality fits with the group. A team might trial five people for the slot you're after, so give it your all, don't half-ass a trial. But assuming you get the spot, congrats! Now you have to get along with the group and perform well for the next however long you are with them. One final note is loot. I mentioned already the upgrade items and books, but let me go into specifics on how this works. Every fight has a specific loot pool. Nowadays it's all coffers, so you don't have to worry about it dropping, say, a ring of fending. Just hope to see and win a ring coffer. But when a tier is current, there's a few more rules to this all. Number one, you get one clear of each fight a week. If you clear the first fight, that's it, you're done. If you try to go into the fight again, you won't get a book drop, and you won't even be allowed to roll on the loot that drops. Further, it's actually currently penalized. If you do not clear with a full party of eight people who have not cleared for the week, you get less loot. So raiding alts are very much a thing. If you want to be in multiple groups, or just help a random group and not cost them loot, then you need to have a second character. On the bright side, technically, you are allowed to win every drop. If you're in Party Finder and take every piece of loot, you might be a jerk. But sometimes, statics will funnel gear into one or two players where possible, to make the further DPS checks easier. Secondly, skipping ahead. Technically, this is not possible. When a tier is current, you must clear the fights in order every single week. Unless, of course, you get an elevator. If you join a party for a fight beyond what you cleared, say joining the third fight before clearing the second, you will get a warning before going in. You will forfeit all loot from the skipped fights, and you will have been counted as clearing it. However, you will be able to freely queue for that fight you skipped to. So if your static is done with the first two fights, one person can get an elevator to the third fight, 
then elevated the group themselves. But again, all books and loot are lost. You cannot go back and clear those fights for the week later. Wait for the weekly reset. Which, thirdly I should mention, raiding is a weekly thing. Progress through a tier is reset weekly, making you reclear each fight after every Tuesday reset. But that also means another chance at loot every week. Regardless of PF or static, this is a good thing for you all. More gear, easier to clear. That basically covers all there is to know with getting into Savage. You'll notice I didn't really go over how to do mechanics in Savage, because you already have that info. It's called Trials, Normal Mode Raids, and Extremes. The mechanics of, well, mechanics, don't change even with getting into Ultimate Raids. The number of times the game will expect you to die will go way up, but how you figure out mechanics is no different. But in the case of Savage, you do have study tools. The normal mode of the raid will highly resemble the Savage mode. People have talked to me saying that there's no real way to understand what's going on or how to figure out Savage. They were specifically talking about the first fight of Anabasios, and the majority of the mechanics of this fight are just the same as in normal mode. You just don't get markers and have to make some general assumptions. Like, two stack markers will usually mean light party stacking. There will be new stuff too that you just need to learn on the fly. Some stuff will be entirely different, others functionally the same. But the point is, a solid understanding of mechanics in general is what you want. There will be some revelations and additions that sure up your mechanics, but you don't have to go in without a solid base. People meme on the easier content a lot, but the same mechanics in those apply to Savage. All those same mechanics are in Savage. Knowing those, you'll be able to recognize when something actually is new or different. And some stuff, well, you just have to experience it for yourself to truly understand. Is it easy? No, but keep an open mind and you'll do just fine. Savage is a step up, but just go in with an open mind and you'll be fine. Be willing to put in all the effort you can. The more you're willing to put in, the more you'll get out of it. If you have any other advice for people trying to get into Savage, go for it. Comments are there to be read when they're civil. I hope what I've laid out is enough for those who haven't known how to start. This quite literally is how to start, and way more beyond that. Again, please leave likes, comments, and all that. Take care, and may the power of Anne Anidhogsley Waste to your enemies.